Hello. Welcome to module eleven of That's English. I'm Kieran. And I'm Samantha. I'm utterly delighted to be back with you all. That's a little over emotional, isn't it? Well, today's program is about expressing emotions. Oh, I see. In that case, I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce the first part of today's episode. Remember Karen, Danny, and Anthony, who all share a house together. Well, in today's episode, we meet Omar. While you watch, answer this question: Why did Omar come to the UK? I think we're pretty lucky, really. We live in a nice house with good friends. I take it you're including yourself in that description. Sorry. Well, I need to think fairly seriously about whether you two were good friends. Housemates, definitely, but good friends. I'm not sure about that. What? But we are friends, aren't we?、Mm. Oh, you two can be immensely annoying sometimes. Hey, you can't get annoyed with your BFFs. I'm deeply offended.、Mm. Well, after this conversation, I might have to rethink my best friends forever list. No, Karen. I'm extremely lucky to have you as a friend and as a housemate. Yes, Danny's right. I'm touched. In fact, I've got a lump in my throat. Ha ha! <laughs> I'm moved to tears. <laughs> What are you working on at the moment? I'm researching an article about asylum seekers. That's a hot topic. Yes, and I'm interviewing one in oh an hour, so I better get my skates on. See you later. Don't be too long, friend. Miss you already. <laughs> What do you want me to say? Just tell me about yourself, who you are, and how you got here. I'm feeling slightly nervous. It's okay. It's not easy pouring your heart out to a total stranger. Have you got any photos or anything we could talk about? Yes, I keep a few on my phone. Perfect. Let's start with those. This is my mum. My father's a journalist like you. Mum was an artist and a musician. You say she was an artist. Has she passed away? No, as far as I know, they're both still alive and well. It's almost impossible to get any news from home. It's really frustrating. Sorry, I I didn't mean to upset you. Carry on. Tell me about life at home. I went to a good school, and then to university. I did a degree in biogenetics. Go on. It was wonderful. I found the research totally compelling. Research must be quite frustrating sometimes, though. Sometimes it can be utterly heartbreaking, like when you think you made a breakthrough only for it to fail. And what made you leave? The government started to persecute anyone who didn't support them. Then the army took over, and things got even worse. The whole country was overtaken by fear. Were you involved directly in the uprising? Not really. My father's newspaper was anti-regime, so we all became targets. My mother was extremely frightened for us. Why didn't they leave? My father refused, and so did Mum. They told me to leave and find a better, safer life. I can see it's distressing for you. We can stop if you like. No, I want to tell you. It's important that people know what is happening in my country. It's what my parents would want. Omar has a very dramatic story to tell. Did you get the answer to the question? Why did Omar come to the UK? The government started to persecute anyone who didn't support them. Then the army took over, and things got even worse. The whole country was overtaken by fear. My father's newspaper was anti-regime, so we all became targets. My mother was extremely frightened for us. They told me to leave and find a better, safer life. 
There was persecution in his country of origin, so he came to the UK to find a better, safer life. We call people like Omar asylum seekers. In the video, we heard people using adverbs and adjectives to express different emotions. We can use adverbs to modify the intensity of an adjective. For example, we can say, I'm quite sad, or I'm extremely sad. I'm deeply offended. Mm. I'm extremely lucky to have you as a friend and as a housemate. You two can be immensely annoying sometimes. I'm feeling slightly nervous. So, Kieran, do you feel lucky to have a co-presenter like me? Samantha, I feel immensely lucky and I'm extremely grateful. <laughs> Not all adjectives are gradable. For example, you can't be rather terrified because terrified is an extreme adjective. With non-gradable adjectives, we don't use very. We use adverbs like completely, totally or utterly. I found the research totally compelling. Sometimes it can be utterly heartbreaking. Like when you think you made a breakthrough only for it to fail. You know, I feel quite sad. My favourite football team lost last night. Oh, no! I'm utterly devastated! Let's take a look at the second part of the video. As you watch, answer this question. How did Omar get to the UK? You OK, Karen? You seem a bit down. Ladies got the blues. <laughs> I was thinking about Omar. The asylum seeker I interviewed. His story was unbelievably sad. Really dreadful. He's living in some awful house while he waits for his asylum application to be processed. He's constantly terrified he'll be sent back. It's a nightmare for him. Well, they have to make sure that the person's really in danger. The papers say that some immigrants come to the UK to take advantage of the benefits system. You can't believe everything you read in the tabloid press about immigration, Danny. I'm a journalist. I should know. Yeah, a lot of what we hear is designed to make people frightened and make them want to restrict immigration. <sighs> Makes me really furious. Anyway, tell us more about this Omar guy. I'll show you some of his interview. I've put some shots together. It was truly terrifying. We paid some traffickers to get me out of the country and into Europe, and I left behind everything I knew. My mother was beside herself with worry before I left. How did you get to Europe? Listen. There were about 15 of us, all in the back of a truck. Four days without food or light and hardly any water. We were so afraid we'd never survive. We were put on a boat to Italy. Then they demanded more money. We didn't have any to give them. That's dreadful. That's reality, Danny. They threatened to abandon us. Luckily, we were picked up by an Italian Navy ship. In the end, I managed to get to the UK. My English is good, so I thought I might have a chance to get work as a scientist. He's a scientist? Something to do with genetics. What's he doing now? He's living in a run-down house with four other guys. I think he's rather desperate. I find it appalling that he suffered so much. It must be really difficult for him. Is there anything we can do? Well, I've got a suggestion to make. Garden, I was terribly anxious you might not turn up. Sorry. I've just been showing my housemates your interview. Oh, I see. I think they were deeply shocked by what you suffered. They'd like to help. I don't need anyone to feel sorry for me, unless one of them works for the immigration department. <laughs> We've got a spare room in the house. You could move into it for a while, until you get sorted out. Please? I'm really touched by your kindness. Thank you. <laughs> Come on then, let's go. I'll introduce you to your new housemates. 
That was really nice of Karen to offer Omar a place to stay. He deserves some kindness. Well, did you answer the question? How did Omar get to the UK? It was truly terrifying. We paid some traffickers to get me out of the country and into Europe. There were about 15 of us, all in the back of a truck. We were put on a boat to Italy. Then they demanded more money. In the end, I managed to get to the UK. Omar had to pay some traffickers to get to the UK. He travelled by truck and by boat, and in very dangerous conditions. Did you notice the different words and expressions people use to describe emotions? Watch. You seem a bit down. It makes me really furious. It was truly terrifying. My mother was beside herself with worry before I left. I find it appalling that he suffered so much. Omar's story does sound truly terrifying. I would have been utterly terrified in that situation. I know. I find it shocking that people have to cope with such difficult situations. Omar said his mother was beside herself with worry, which means she was very worried. It's time now to hear from people on the street. And in this module, we went all the way to the USA. We asked people, in what situations do you find it easier or more difficult to express your emotions? I find it easy to express my emotions when I'm grounded and when I have time to think about how I feel. Um, I find it easiest when I'm around people who are familiar to me, family, co close friends. Easier with family and friends. That's probably the best for that. But close friends too. Um, probably drinking helps a little bit. Probably when like I get really excited about things. When I like to share my feelings is like around people that I like know and that like tr that I can trust and like are my parents. It's more difficult when you're with strangers, I think. I would say difficult when I'm upset or you know not feeling you know myself. It's hard to express yourself when you're upset. Well, I definitely have a hard time expressing my emotions whenever I'm talking to my family. I find it difficult to express my emotions when talking to his family, too. <laughs> I think it's more difficult to express my emotions when I'm at work around people. I find it difficult in front of people I don't know, I'm not comfortable with, uh, in front of multiple people, crowds. When I'm angry, it's, it's hard to, you know, I don't, I don't get angry a lot, but it's hard to, you know, communicate and express, you know, emotion when you have, you know, this overwhelming, you know, sensation. So, most people find it easier to express emotions with close friends and family. Drinking helps, as Victor said. And they find it more difficult in front of strangers or when they're upset or angry. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.